Hello all, I'm Anders and let's talk some hobby. So today, we're going to be building a display board for an online event being run by Father Justin for the Ontario Strategy Battle Game League. I've made several of the display boards of various complexities, but they've all been for evil armies. So for this one, I wanted to make a good one for my Gondor army. One of my favorite locations in Middle Earth is Osgiliath, as I just love the idea and visuals of a once great city turned into a constant no man's land battlefield. However, I also really like the ranges of Gondor and thus wanted to bring some of that greenery into it. So looking at some reference pictures along with my concept art books, I start planning out my design. I decided I would build a main ruined building near the center with a tree and a stream next to it to represent the borders of the city. With the ideas in place, I head to my favorite location to buy materials, the dollar store. I know this isn't the case everywhere, but it's amazing just how much they seem to have here in Canada. I started by picking up the largest picture frame they had, along with some styrofoam balls, paint, and two-part epoxy. So now that I've got everything, I get to work on the main building. I'm using bricks cut out of insulation foam for this. And while I don't have a hard rule for the size, I just try to make sure they look good enough next to my models, that they're twice as long as they are high and are all roughly the same size. I then add texture by throwing them in a bag along with some rocks and shaking it around. For the actual assembly, I just kind of go at it freeform. Keeping in mind some of the designs you see in the movie, I try and integrate the shapes and angles typical of Gondorian architecture and use some other materials like foam core, dowels, and styrofoam balls to add more detail. Once I've got this built, I then lay it on the board and draw out the other shapes I want before building up the basic landforms with some scrap styrofoam and plaster rocks. I stuck these on using some leftover PL premium construction adhesive I had lying around and created a border using some more foam core to get a solid clean look on the final piece. I don't worry about this being too rough as we'll be going on later with some homemade modeling compound to smooth it out. Because I've decided to leave the inside of the ruin tower open, I realized I actually needed to paint this before I put it on the board, so I did that now. I started by mixing up a mixture of paint, caulking, and some sand as it will not only give us a nice solid color, but will strengthen the foam and add some more stony textures to the piece. For painting, I then followed along with Zorpa Zorp's scheme for painting Gondor terrain, adding a lot of different colors of bricks and bringing them all together with washes and dry brushes. I decided to put this on the board before the final steps, as I could use those to tie it into the environment around it later. Before doing that though, I needed to build up the ground shapes and so mixed up some modeling compound using some paper pulp and fast drying plaster before smearing it all over the structure and smoothing it out. Once this dried, I went ahead and painted it up, making the areas I planned to make woodland brown, the ruined sections gray, and the border black. Then I applied the texture by layering it in a PVA glue and putting down tile grout for the earth and kitty litter for the rocks. However, this actually was kind of a mistake. We'd recently bought a different kind of kitty litter and this one had a more uniform shape and just didn't dry. So I ended up scraping it up a couple of days later and took this opportunity to switch it up. I first put down some more stonework by cutting up egg cartons into brick shapes and putting down a more generic basing mix, cheap kitty litter, decorative sand, and baking soda before sealing the whole thing with several coats of watered down PVA and isopropyl alcohol. While the tile grout areas kept a nice color, the rest of it had to be painted, so I did put down some painter's tape to protect the frame and painted most of it gray. While picking out the stones with a variety of lighter grays and whites before dry brushing it all together, and applying some brown and green washes at random to give some tonal variety. Finally, it's on to the greenery, and I started by making a tree. I was initially just going to do a normal coniferous tree, but ended up going with the pine after looking at the pictures of the Athelion filming locations. This was pretty experimental, and I'm not 100% happy with it, but 
The approach may have some merit, so I may do a video about how I made it in the future if people are interested. Before sticking it down though, I initially applied some patchy grass and bushes by sticking down some clumps of lichen dipped in flock, applying some decorative moss, and then adding the same moss sifted through a sieve over top. I also mixed some more of the moss with watered down PVA and applied it to the ruin to make some mossy effects. Then it was onto the water, and for this I used that cheap two part epoxy from the dollar store as it is super cheap and is really easy to use. I just dammed off the river with some more painter's tape, decanted the whole tube into a cup, and added a few drops of brown and green washes to give it a murky color. Then I added a little isopropyl alcohol to make it flow a bit better before pouring it in. It cures in just over 5 minutes with the iso, so while it's drying, I tried to push it around and create little shapes in it to give the water a sense of movement. It ended up leaking out a bit on the side, but overall looked pretty good, so I just peeled off the tape once it was dried and sanded the sides flat. Now it was time to add the tree, but before that I wanted to add some fallen pine needles to the ground. I did this using the two colors of flock I made for the tree from sawdust. A reddy brown for dead needles and a bluey green for live ones. I mainly put down the brown ones where it would presumably have fallen, and also sprinkled a little bit of live ones to add some variety. And with that it was mostly done save for attaching the tree and applying some gloss varnish to the edge to give the whole thing a nicer finish. I also decided to add a little title card saying for Gondor. I did this by cutting out a bit of wood, painting all the sides a semi-gloss black except for one which I kept white, and applied a printed off title with some glue. I then painted this with some Agrax Earthshade and attached it with a couple of screws, and we're done. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's super light, easy to carry around, and looks great in my opinion. I love building scenes like this, and I'm really keen to build a second one of these now for my Mordor Force. As for the competition, drum roll, I came in first this time! This was really great, and I'm really proud to have done this. The other entries were fantastic, and it's just great to see so many people enjoying the hobby. And that's about it! But before signing off, I wanted to thank you and all the amazing support I've gotten since the last video. I got way more views than my old ones, and we've jumped well over 100 subscribers, so thanks again to everyone, and continue to like, comment, subscribe, and follow us over on Instagram and Twitter. For now. I'm Anders, and have a good one.